Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Megan, if you haven't been here before. And here, I like to do true crime most of the time, but I also like to spice it up and throw some fashion and everything in there, which I am thinking about doing next week, starting a back to school, but a uh, college edition, because I am a senior and on Monday I start school and it is my last year of school ever. So uh, I'm very nervous and I'm very excited and sad at the same time. So I'd love to give like tips and tricks or even outfit ideas for commuters because that's what I am. I commute to my school, I do not live there. Uh, this week is going to be another true crime video. Um, I want to lead up to October because in October I want to do ghost stories, all that good stuff. I love ghost stories, love it. Always been obsessed with ghosts. Always been obsessed with all those shows. Oh my god, love. This week is going to be a true crime video, but it is going to be focused in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania true crime is near and dear to my heart. Not really, but actually because I live in Pennsylvania and um, I've grown up around criminal justice people. So um, I really enjoy hearing the stories, even though they're not good stories, but I like learning about what happened in our area, how it happened, how we might have never saw it, you know? So this video is going to be about Harvey Miguel Robertson. So to give you the quick little breakdown before I start getting into him, the reason I know about this case is because I do minor in criminal justice currently and I took capital punishment last semester. The professor was the lawyer who got Harvey one of his death sentences reduced to a life sentence. So I know a lot about the case. I know a little bit uh, more than that is on the internet because the lawyer told us everything. Maybe you guys will like it, maybe you guys won't. Let me know. Uh, I'm still looking for a name for the series, but this one little alone might be like PA Serial Killer series. I don't know, something like that, something broad. Um, but yeah, let's get into it uh, and what he did and how he's a trash of a human being. But, um, what he's doing now, what he's done, and what will happen to him. Harvey Miguel Robinson. We will get into that. The video is going to be three different sections. First, introducing him and his background. Second is his crimes. And the third is his trial, what happened. And what's next? What's next to come? Harvey Miguel Robinson was born on December 6, 1974. He was born, born in Allentown, PA, where it's basically he was born and raised in Allentown, lived there his whole life, and Allentown is about 40 minutes away from Philadelphia. There's not much positive things to say about his childhood, sorry. Um, his childhood and his upbringing probably definitely helped shape what happened to him and who, why he became who he is. Um, just want to say he is known as probably the youngest, one of the youngest serial killers in American history. He was 17 when he committed his first murder and then he continued in a spree in a very short period of time and got caught by 18. So this happened in less than a year. Was a violent alcoholic who killed a woman and threatened to kill Harvey's mother several times. So his father was already a criminal, so that background wasn't far from him at all. Harvey was born to his mom and dad, and he also has a brother and sister. Um, both are older, if I'm correct. I believe Harvey is the youngest child. At a young age, Harvey idolized his father, regardless of the kind of man he was and what he did to them. Um, his father was an alcoholic, so he actually encouraged Harvey and his siblings to intake in alcoholic beverages with him at a young age. Father always acted out to his mother with violence and to the children as well. Um, Harvey was a witness to all of this violence, which clearly stuck with him throughout his life. Drug abuse in this home was not um, foreign to this family. Uh, most of the family had in, took in uh, drug abuse and alcohol abuse, his mother being one as well. His mother was addicted to drugs and she would hop around from boyfriend to boyfriend to also get these drugs once her hidden once his father and his mother got a divorce. At the age of six years old, Harvey was uh, showed ev he showed evidence of brain damage. Uh, there's not much to say about this. I think my professor said like 
you know, he was a kid. He fell a few times. They brushed it off. Probably a concussion. Probably led to more than that, and no one noticed. After his parents' divorce and after all this sign of brain damage, his he was put into a class of socially and emotionally disturbed children. At the age of nine, he also became addicted to drugs and alcohol, which too young for a child to be addicted to anything. Um, as a note, his psychiatrist growing up uh, noted that at age 10, Harvey's family life and home was very chaotic. He tried to make the best of it in high school and tried, you know, he tried in school, but he had a lower IQ than most. His brother and sister also struggled, obviously living in the same home with the same problems, but uh, it's sad to say that the whole family had a life of crime uh, that they all got into, but it is noted in his court documents that his brother might have not been the best role model to look up to growing up, but as he grew up older and he realized how bad everything that he was doing was, he decided to end up turning his life around and he now is a very functioning human of society. Um, he has a family and he's a normal human being and turned his life around for the better. At 14, when he was on probation, because he, him and his family got into a life of crimes and they were at first petty theft, very small things. His sister did it, his brother did it, his mom, his mom went from boyfriend to boyfriend, ab abusive boyfriend to abusive boyfriend, and supplying drugs for her, so he was never in a good environment. Um, but it says at 14, when he was on probation, his probation officer noted that he had endured a lifetime of emotional upheaval. It's so one of those things, if it's nature versus nurture, if he was born into a family that worked for him, if he would have been a functioning human being. But it is also noted that people do think that he is a sociopath, so here's to say here or there if he would have been, but his upbringing obviously did not help. In the next part, we will get into his crimes. His crimes are awful. He is a bitch. I'm sorry. Harvey, uh, on his kick of burglarizing and doing all that stuff, stumbled upon um, an assistant living home, and he walked into the home of Joan Burghard, who was a 29-year-old, and she was a nurse's aide. So he went in there only thinking he wanted to steal, and she actually happened to be home and he ended up she ended up becoming his first victim and it is pretty much known that this wasn't premeditated it wasn't intentional like he did not stalk her out plan and go to murder her it just kind of happened but um i think it was because he was burglarizing it and she was there and that was a shock to him and then he didn't know what to do so he decided to kill her but um she was sexually assaulted and he was bludgeoned about 30 times um, in her place in East Allentown. In June of 1993, he abducted, he attacked, and he sexually assaulted a, another girl who was 15 named Charlotte, Charlotte Schmoyer. Charlotte was a newspaper girl, and she was out in the morning doing her normal newspaper things on her run. She picked up her newspapers in the morning and it was because she had so many loyal customers or consumers of the newspaper that they actually called and they said, hey, Charlotte hasn't dropped off our newspapers yet. Do you know where she is? Did something happen? Because she would ride her bike around and try to get to everybody. But um, Harvey had found her. He took her into a wooded area close to where she was taken and he decided to sexually assault her. And then once he was done, he killed her. He was stabbed over 20 times and it's her parents are very heavily um, they're heavily involved in his trial as of right now and they hold a lot of power and the power that they did have they held for a long time and they refused to give it up but they knew that justice would be served so You'll, you'll see what happens with that. Once again, he's a piece of, he's a piece of something. And, um, 
to make it even worse, this next case, um, the names are unspecified because it was a five-year-old girl, and this one is heartbreaking, um, because he went in with the intention of actually doing everything he did to her to the girl's mother, but it was at night, it was it, or it was earlier in the morning, it was probably five in five or six in the morning, and he went into the mother's bedroom and realized that the father was also home, so he decided that would be too much of a hassle, so instead of doing what he does, he wanted to do to her, he went into her daughter's bedroom, and he took her from her bed in her sleep, brought her downstairs to the laundry room, and he sexually assaulted her and did this all in their laundry room and left her there. And he, like, ran away as soon as the parents woke up. And this five-year-old daughter was just, like, why? Like, it just doesn't make sense. And actually, my professor said that when doing research on this case, he found the girl who it happened to and he is very upset by what has happened to her because she is down somewhere away and he found out where she's living but her job is not one of the best. Her job, her life, and her problems in a young age led to her developing an addiction to drugs and to prostitute herself which is just heartbreaking because she never asked for this and you always wonder what could have happened if this didn't happen to her and I can only feel for the parents and the mother feeling like why did you have to do it to her like I take me instead I just think that's so heartbreaking and it sucks and again Harvey you suck so don't know what else to say his next victim is a badass um this woman is the reason he gets caught so um on june 28th of 1993 sam denise callie was asleep in her home and she had heard someone break in and she went to get up to fight him but he was already there but one thing to note is harvey harvey did like bigger women so Denise was not like a small fragile young girl um she was older and she was bigger um was not going down without a fight and she fought her way to get this man off of him off of her um he did end up assaulting her that night sexually and physically um he almost beat her face to being unrecognizable and she fought. She did not give up at all. She ended up getting him outside of her house on her front lawn for all the neighbors to hear or see and it was in the earlier mornings that he did his crimes. So he ended up running away because one of the neighbors um, ended up hearing the commotion and saw her and she survived this attack. So, he was not happy about this, Mr. Old Harvey. No, 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 no. He might not be the brightest bulb in the tank, which he really isn't, and you'll see why, but he did not like this. This must have irked him in some type of way. I'm not sure, but only about two weeks later, on July 14th, um, he murdered a grandmother who was 47 years old, uh, Jean, or Jessica Jean Fortney. Um, she was badly beaten. She was sexually assaulted and she was stabbed. And she, like I said, she was a grandmother, but it was noted that in his court, I believe her grandkids or her, her daughter was like, you took away a great woman and now you're facing the consequences, which good for them. But yeah, Harvey was not, he was not an organized killer. He was still a serial killer, but no way in hell was he organized. Um, I believe he left prints, like, everywhere. Like, people knew what he looked like, obviously, now after Denise. Um, people had 
an idea of who he was, what he looked like, um, but, you know, he was just, like, he was pretty decent at hiding, I guess. He was not smart. What he did was so stupid. So stupid. And what's even better is that Sam Denise Callie, who's a badass, knew what he was going to do. She said he is going to come back and try to finish the job. And she had this bad suspicion. She was paranoid. She just went through an attack and literally, like, just made it by and she was like he is going to come back and he is going to try to hurt me the police agreed and they agreed to stake out her house and keep an eye on her so he kills he kills jessica jean fortney on july 14th 1993 four days later he goes back to sam denise callie's house he tries to break in once again this time, she's not playing. There is a cop sitting outside of her house. He went in there. So he w he was going to go in there. He was going to finish the job. The police are sitting right outside. Keep this in mind. She, the alarm goes off. She, I'm pretty sure she had a gun, everything. She was ready to go. She was like, I'll finish the job this time. So instead, he bolted. He said, no, I'm out. I hear the alarms. The cop gets out of his car. Officer Brian Lewis um, and him ended up having a shootout outside of her home because he was trying to escape. So, Officer Brian Lewis, I don't believe that he was shot. Yeah, he was not shot. Harvey brought a gun this time, so I don't know what that man's was doing. He has no, he has no solid plan, has no similar thing, you know? He's just going out, out there. He brings a gun. He's trying to just finish it up. He doesn't even want to worry about doing the other stuff. He's just like, nah, this is it. I'm done. But the cop shot him. And he's obviously injured. So wh what do you think he did? You think he went home and you think he stitched up himself? You think he got one of his buddies on the line and was like, yo, I need someone to stitch me up. He goes to the hospital to get care for a gunshot wound from a cop. And what do you think the cops think he did? They thought he went to the hospital. They found him at the hospital and arrested him. And he was charged with three murders. He was put on trial for attempted Attempted hump, ugh. attempted murder on Denise Sam Callie, sexual assault on her. He was also charged for the murders and sexual assaults of Joan Bernard, Charlotte Schmoyer, and Jessica Fort or Jessica Jean Fortney, and also the little girl who he did bad stuff to. So now we are going to get into his trial, and it's not going to be a long part, but. Uh, I want to get into the logistics about what capital punishment is, what revolves around it, and how my professor was involved in this case. Is arrested and he is put on trial. And he pleaded guilty. I mean, he pleaded not guilty due to reasons of in, um, insanity. I'm just going to skip through most of the first trial. So he was charged for the first, he was charged for all three murders and he was given three death sentences. But this is where my professor comes in. Um, the death penalty is something that, you know, people have opinions on. It's here or there, you know, it is what it is, whatever you believe in. But um, my professor was a defense lawyer to get people off of a uh, death row. He was brought in after first murder, who was Joan Bernard, uh, 29 years old. Her family actually decided to overturn the death sentence that was placed on him because they said it was in their heart that they needed to forgive him and let this go. What he did was obviously awful, but they don't want to carry around that pain anymore. He's going to be put to death for it because he was a juvenile when it happened. So you cannot be put to death 
you cannot be put, placed on death row when you are a juvenile. That one was taken away and it was reduced to a life sentence, which still means he is serving life in prison. So regardless, he has that on him and two death sentences. So my professor came in for the second death sentence to be changed to a life sentence. And this was the Charlotte Moyer case, which was a much more sensitive one. It was a 15 year old. Again, the girl who was doing the daily newspaper and he decided to abduct her and do what he did to her and kill her. Her parents were very adamant on not giving up, not letting him reduce this sentence from death to life because he did not do the same for their daughter. He murdered her da their daughter in cold blood. Because of everything that happened with Denise Callie and um, the five-year-old, he was still had extra charges for that as well. So in turn for the last death, which was Jean, Jean, Jean Jessica Jean Fortney, that one was not going to be overturned or overturned, which is what convinced the Mo the Schmoyers to overturn their sentence and give him a life sentence. That is where my professor came in. He ended up doing the mitigating circumstances for that case, which is what I was reading off of earlier. Mitigating circumstances are just as important as aggravating circumstances. Basically, as I was saying, Harvey was first Harvey first had three death sentences and now he only has one remaining and two life sentences on him, including other charges as well. So he is going to live out his life in prison, but the Schmoyers gave up their fight because they said that the Fortneys refused to back down from giving him a death sentence. So we will see if that changes. Um, Sam Cali, he passed away in 2020. Um, or no, she passed away in 2021. Um, she passed away in her sleep or something. She passed away, I believe she was in her 60s. She lived out a full life, but it was noted that she constantly said how she now lived in fear of everything. She had a watchdog, she had a boyfriend. Everything traumatized her, but she did help other victims as well. So I think it is very nice of her to do that. Uh, I'm so saddened to hear about her death. My professor was as well. Uh, we found out about it during class time. So it was definitely interesting to hear and very a sad tale. But um, Harvey got injured in jail and in prison. And now he can barely walk without, he can barely walk. Uh, he usually sits in a wheelchair. He is very less intimidating than he was when he was first arrested. He is older now. He will live out, he will remain in prison for the rest of his life, whether he is put on death row or not, but um, in no time soon will he be executed or anything. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It is a shorter one, but um, I like it just because it's Pennsylvania, baby, you know? Things happen here, bad things happen in Philly, according to you know who, so. Um, I really just want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you didn't. Uh, I love the feedback. love all the honesty. It really is helping me and it's helping me grow. Uh, I, hope to bleh, I hope to produce more stuff. Uh, I really want to do a college video soon. Uh, love to get back into the swing of things, especially with COVID coming to an end and starting back up again. So, um... I just want to say thank you again. Subscribe if you like me. If you don't, that's fine. But come back and watch me, please. Um, leave a like. I would really appreciate it. And follow me on my social medias. My name is Megan underscore McGuire with two E's at the end of my last name. So um, I hope you guys come join in the fun. Uh, thank you guys again so much. Uh, I'm just so appreciative. And I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day.